This video demonstrates the design procedure of a single reinforced RC sibling as per IS456-2000 code provisions. In this video, we will learn the design of simply supported single reinforced concrete beam for the following data. Clear span is 3 meter, the width of support is 200 mm, the live load acting on the beam is 16 kN per meter, the grade of concrete is M20 and the grade of steel is Fe415 HYLT bars. Let us start by getting the values of FCK and F1. As per table 2 of IS456-2000, the value of FCK for M20 grade concrete is 20 Newton per mm square. The value of Fy for Fe415 steel is 415 Newton per mm square as per SP34-1987 table 1.1. Let us start with step 1 by deciding the initial cross-sectional dimension of the beam. The initial effective depth of the beam can be assumed based on vertical deflection criteria by referring clause 23.2.1 of IS456. This clause gives the maximum values of span to effective depth ratios. These ratios indicate the minimum effective depth for different span length and support conditions. Here, for a simply supported beam, maximum value of span to depth ratio is 20. Hence, to get the safer section for the bending, we can assume it between 12 to 15. For this numerical, let us adopt the span to depth ratio equal to 12. Putting the value of span as 3 meter in the ratio, we get the initial effective depth as 250 mm. Assume nominal clear cover by referring to table 16 of IS456 for moderate exposure as 30 mm and bar diameter as 20 mm. Calculate the effective cover by adding the clear cover and half the bar diameter. Thus, we get the effective cover as 40 mm. Now compute the total depth of beam by adding an effective cover to the effective depth which comes to 290 mm. Round up the total depth to 300 mm. Recalculate the final effective depth by subtracting the effective cover from the total depth which comes to 260 mm. Now assume the total width of the beam as 230 mm. In step 2, let us calculate the effective span of the beam referring to clause 22.2 of IS456 as clear span plus the effective depth of the beam or center to center of support, whichever is less. Hence, let us calculate first clear span plus the effective depth of the beam, which comes to 3.26 meter. And second, center to center of support is 3.20 meter. Adopt effective span equal to least value between first and second, which is 3.2 meter. In step 3, let us calculate the load acting on the beam. First, calculate the self weight or a dead weight of a beam by multiplying the cross-sectional area of a beam with concrete density. Consider the concrete density as 25 kN per meter cube by referring to clause 19.2.1 of IS456. After putting the values of concrete density, width and depth of beam, we get dead load of the beam as 1.725 kN per meter. Round up it to 1.73 kN per meter. While the live load or imposed load on the beam is given as 16 kN per meter. After getting dead load and imposed load, Compute the total design or factor load per unit length using a load combination of dead load plus live load with a partial safety factor of 1.5 as given in table 18 of IS456. Thus, 
the total design or factored load for unit length equals to 1.5 times red load plus 1.5 times imposed load. This is equal to 26.6 kN per meter. This way, we get the analytical model of simply supported beam as shown in figure 1 to calculate bending moment and shear force. In step 4, we will do the computation of the ultimate bending moment and ultimate shear force due to design load. We will also calculate the limiting ultimate moment of resistance for the initially assumed cross section of the beam. Let us compute the ultimate bending moment. The maximum bending moment for the simply supported beam is WL square by 8 at mid span. By putting the value of design load and span, we get MU is equals to 34.05 kN meter. Next, compute the ultimate shear force which is equal to WL by 2. We get VU equals to 42.56 kN. Finally, to check the adequacy of the assumed cross sectional size of the beam, compute ultimate limiting moment of resistance. Based on the class 38.1 and an G of IS456 for FE415 grade steel, the moment of resistance is equal to 0.138 FCK BD square. By putting all the values, we get it, the moment of resistance equal to 42.91 kNm, which is more than the acting bending moment of 34.05 kNm. Hence, the initially assumed sectional dimension of the beam are adequate and safe and we can say the section is under reinforced. After knowing the adequacy of the cross sectional size of the beam, let us compute reinforcement on the tension side of the beam in step number 5. The area of a steel required for the design bending moment can be calculated by referring the formula given in clause G1.1.1 B annexer G of IS456-2000. This formula results in quadratic equation. So, you need to solve the quadratic equation to get the value of AST. Otherwise, you can also use the simplified equation to to calculate AST. Let us use equation number 2 to compute the required area of a steel. By putting all the required values in the equation, the area of a steel required on the tension side is equal to 425 mm square. Now let us check the minimum area of a steel required as per IS code. Using the equation given in clause 26.5.1.1a of IS456, the minimum area of a steel required is 122 mm square, which is less than the required area of a steel 425 mm square calculated earlier. Hence, required area of a steel on the tension side is equal to 425 mm square. Let us fix the number of bars to be provided as tension reinforcement. Select the bar diameter as 12 mm. The cross sectional area of this bar is 113 mm square. Now compute the number of bars by dividing the required area of a steel by cross sectional area of each bar. Provide four numbers of 12 mm dia bar at the bottom which is the tension side. Thus, the total area of a steel provided is equal to 452 mm square. Also provide two number of 10 mm dia bars at the top as the anchor bars. In step 6, check the feasibility of the beam section and reinforcement for the shear stress. The nominal shear stress in the beam due to shear force is obtained by using the equation given in clause 
40.1 of IS-456. Putting the values of shear force, width and effective depth of the beam, we get shear stress equal to 0.71 Newton per mm square. Table 20 of IS-456 gives the maximum allowable shear stress value tau c max for the different concrete grades. So, here for M20 grade of concrete, tau c max is 2.8 Newton per mm square. As per the clause 40.2.3 of IS-456, under any circumstances, even with shear reinforcement, the nominal shear stress tau v should not be more than tau c max. Now let us compare the shear stress with the design shear strength of the beam. We can get this design shear strength based on the percentage area of a steel provided and the grade of concrete from table 90 of IS456. So let us calculate the percentage area of a steel provided. By providing the values of area of a steel provided, width, and depth of the beam, we get the percentage of a steel PT as 0.756%. In table 19, the percentage value PT is lying between 0.75 and 1.0. Hence, the value of a tau C is also between corresponding values of 0.56 and 0.62 for M20 grade of concrete. Here, we can calculate the tau C by using linear interpolation formula. Let us mark the values of x1, x2, y1, y2, x and y. By putting all these values in the interpolation formula, we get y equal to 0.561, which is the value of tau C. Here, tau v is more than tau c which means acting shear stress is more than shear strength of the beam section. Therefore, as per clause 40.4 of IS456, when tau v is more than tau c given in table 19, shear reinforcement shall be provided. As per the clause 26.5.1.6, the shear reinforcement shall be provided to carry a shear equal to Vu minus tau C into B into D. After putting the value of Vu, tau C, B and D, we get the balance shear force for which shear reinforcement is to be designed. The value is 8773 Newton. Let us use two legged 8 mm diameter vertical stirrups. The spacing of the stirrups can be calculated by referring equation given in clause 26.5.1.6 for vertical stirrups. Rearrange this equation to get the stirrup spacing. In the equation, the value of ASV which is the total cross-sectional area of the stirrup legs effective in shear will be calculated by multiplying number of legs with the cross-sectional area of the stirrup bar. After providing all the values in the equation and solving, we get stirrup spacing SV equal to 1075 mm. As per the clause 26.5.1.5, the maximum spacing of the stirrup shall not exceed 0.75 times the effective depth of the beam. Also, the stirrup spacing should not be more than 300 mm in any case. So, let us calculate the second value of stirrup spacing equal to 0.75 times effective depth, which is equal to 195 mm. And the third value of stirrup spacing is equal to 300 mm. 
now maximum speed of spacing is equal to the minimum value of the first second and third value of spacing this is equal to 195 mm hence provide the spacing of the vertical speed up as 175 mm finally let us summarize the design and the reinforcement detailing a rectangular singly reinforced beam is designed with m20 grade of concrete and fe415c the width of beam is 230 mm while the depth is 300 mm four number of 12 mm diameter bars are provided as main reinforcement at bottom while two number of 10 mm dia bars are provided as anchor bars at the top two leg 8 mm dia vertical stirrups are provided at spacing of 175 center to center if you like this video then subscribe this channel to get the interesting videos for visual and simplified learning of various civil engineering topics